evening, everybody. Good evening. Isn't Jesus wonderful? All the time. Amen. I think people maybe decided it was such a nice day that they decided to stay outside or somewhere. We've got a few of us wonderful, faithful people here tonight, but we know we've got people watching us by Facebook, too. I'm Pastor John Albright, and this is Living Faith Fellowship Church. We're glad that you joined us tonight. And the first Wednesday of the month, we do what we call Prayer for the Nation. And tomorrow is a very special day, too. It's called the National Day of Prayer. And it's the 69th annual National Day of Prayer tomorrow. And we'll be talking about that more. And we will have a very special event tomorrow. And we usually have a prayer breakfast here at our church. And um, because of the COVID-19 situation, we have... Um, are only going to have a virtual uh, prayer time tomorrow but that's going to be a, a wonderful experience too um, on zoom and on facebook and you can just tune in onto this facebook page and it will be on there tomorrow morning at 7 a.m and there will be ministers and lay leaders praying for our country and we just hope that many many people will join us with that too and then i will be talking to you later on too about there's going to be a national prayer um, for the nation. It's going to be a wonderful time from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. And I know it's on the Daystar Network. I have my DVR ready for it. And it's going to have Michael W. Smith and, and Will Graham and um, Kathy Brenzel. She's the president of the National Day of Prayer. And many others will be praying for our country tomorrow. So that would be a wonderful event to be watching and praying with. So let's start out with a word of prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for everyone watching tonight. We thank you for our country, for the United States of America. We thank you for the freedom that we have to pray, the freedom that we can come tonight and worship. We thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you that you keep us safe every day, and we don't ever want to take that for granted. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the lamb that was slain for us. We thank you, Lord, for salvation that we know that we're going to heaven. We have an assurance. We thank you that you made us righteous, that we have right standing with God. We're thankful, we're grateful for all the many blessings that you bestow on us every day. And we thank you for it, Lord. And we thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. We thank you for all that you want to be said and done. We thank you for the strength, for the help. Thank you, Lord, that you talk to us and speak to us tonight. And then as we pray, we hear you, Father God, and you hear us, and we thank you for it. And we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. And we receive all that you have for us tonight. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing the Star Spangled Banner, but I want to sing the fourth verse. And then I'll have you join me singing the verse that we know. Thus be it ever when free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation, blessed with victory.
just worship you tonight, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We worship you. Do the breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise on you tonight, Lord. We love you so much. Oh, we worship you. Tell Jesus how much you love him tonight. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you always love me. You never stop loving me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Your love that never ends. Your never-ending love. Oh, from everlasting to everlasting. Great is your love, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight. We honor you. We bless you. We give you the glory and the praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Lord. We honor you tonight, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. So tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. And then we'll get into our other prayer too here. But the national, I'm going to talk, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background of it. The National Day of Prayer is an annual observance held on the first Thursday of May, inviting people of all faiths to pray for the nation. It was created in 1952 by a joint resolution of the United States Congress and signed into law by President Harry S. Truman. Our task force is a privately funded organization whose purpose is to encourage participation in the National Day of Prayer. It exists to communicate with every individual the need for personal repentance and prayer, to create appropriate materials, and to mobilize the Christian community to intercede for America's leaders and its families. The task force represents a Judeo-Christian expression of the national observance based on our understanding that this country was birthed in prayer and a reverence for the God of the Bible. The 59th National Day of Prayer is tomorrow, May 7th. This year's theme is Pray God's Glory Across the Earth. The verse is, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, Habakkuk 2.14. And how to pray for America. Why should we pray for America? Nothing comes to us as a surprise to God. You realize that? Whether we face COVID-19, fluctuating economics, threats from abroad, unrest at home, or other troubling circumstances, our Heavenly Father is not caught unaware. Through prayer, we are able to tap into His wisdom, strength, protection, and peace. He stands ready to respond to our needs when we humbly ask for divine intervention in the affairs of men. As we pray for America, whose Pledge of Allegiance recounts that we are one nation under God, and whose currency states that it is in God that we trust, we want Americans to encounter the God who rules over their country. He who forms the mountains, creates the wind, and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns dawn to darkness and treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God Almighty is his name. That's in Amos 4.13. He is the one who gave us the promise in 2 Chronicles 7.14, and you should know this scripture, If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. As we humbly and diligently seek him, we'll be changed, and we'll see transformation in America throughout prayer. And what I like about the National Day of Prayer is they have seven centers of influence in our nation. They have seven different categories that we pray for and we should pray for this all the time but but every t year during the national day of prayer we do center in on these different seven centers of influence the first one is government and we realize government it's important and we have depended upon our government a lot in the last few months but at the same time government can never take the place of god right and government should not take the place and government is not our source God is our source, amen? He always remains our source. We cannot look to the government to do everything for us, to
to give us a paycheck, to, to provide every need. God, God is the only one that can do that. But we are thankful that we do have a government. But we need to pray. And the government needs to stay in its place. Amen? And we put God in first place. And we keep him in first place. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray for our leaders, for the judges in our courts. And we ask you, Lord, to grant them wisdom to act with integrity. That you give wisdom to President Trump. Wisdom to all the leaders in our government, Father God. All those in Washington, D.C., that you give our governor, Pete Ricketts, and all of those in the state government, all of our county of government officials, all of our city government officials, our school boards, all of those in our government, Father God, we thank you for that. And we thank you that you lead, guide, and direct them. And 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2 says, Therefore I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. So we do pray, Lord, for our president, for our vice president, our cabinet members, the congressional leaders, the Supreme Court justices. Thank you, Father God, that they will make decisions and they will, they will adhere to biblical principles. We lift up Governor Ricketts. We lift up all of our executive leaders, our legislature, legislative leaders, our judicial leaders. We thank you for that in our state of Nebraska. We do lift up our, our local government. We pray for uh, Mayor Sonia Schmidt and the Superior City Council. We pray for, for the Mayor Nelson and the, the, the Nelson City Council. We pray for, pray for our uh, police chief, our fire chief, our judges, and all of our county officials in Knuckles County. Thank you, Lord. And then the, ne the next point is military. He it says he appointed military offices over the people and assembled them and encourage them with these words, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of, because of the king of Assyria and vast army with him. With him only is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Second Chronicles 32, six through eight. Now think about that. With him only is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. When we start fighting the battles in our flesh, we'll lose every time. But when we have the Lord fight our battles for us, we're victorious every time. So never stop asking God for his help. Never stop praying for our country. Never stop depending upon God. Not on yourself. Not on your own strength. There's no way we will prevail, but we must trust God and we will prevail. Amen? Courage and dependence on God, Psalm 91. Perseverance to endure hardship, Isaiah 43, 2 and Deuteronomy 31, 6. Divine protection from the enemy, Romans 5, 1 through 5. Wise leaders who inspire respect from those under their command, Romans 13, 1. Confidence and vision to persist in the face of negative publicity, Psalm 18, 31 to 39. Protection and support for the families they have left behind. Romans 1, 8 through 10. And chaplains who are divinely appointed to deliver hope and spiritual strength. Father, we pray for all these things. We pray for the courage and dependence for these military people, Father God. Everyone that's in our military. We pray that they are perse have perseverance and they can endure any hardship they face. We thank you that they are divinely protected from the enemy, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus and we claim Psalm 91. We thank you that they have wise leaders who inspire respect from those under their command. We continue to thank you for confidence and vision to persist in the face of negative publicity. We thank you for protection and support for the families they've left behind, that you take care of them, Father God. And we thank you for those chaplains that are, are divinely appointed to deliver hope and spiritual strength. We thank you for our military. We thank you for all the branches. We thank you for a strong military. We thank you for a president who makes sure that we have a strong military, a commander in chief who has made sure that the money is allocated where it needs to be. And we thank you that we continue to have a strong military. And then we go to the media. And we love the media, right? <laughs> We walk in love with the media. Praise God. Philippians 4, 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, 
whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, what is admirable. If there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. <laughs> we need to do that with the media, okay? <laughs> we need to just choose to pray for them and love them. The decision makers within the media, we pray that they would realize they can make profit by producing family friendly, friendly projects. Proverbs 8, 10 through 11. The Christians in media to find favor and be filled with creative ideas that bring kingdom principles and life giving messages to the public. Proverbs 2, 1 through 15. Celebrities to be, be provided with repeated opportunities to hear and receive salvation. Proverbs 8.35. So Father, we lift up our military and we pray for those, we pray for those that are right now true and they want to, and they have integrity and they're wanting the truth to be made known and they're working very hard to do that. We continue to protect them, keep them, Father God. And those, the corrupt, corrupt media, Father God, pray that they get saved. Pray that their hearts would change. Only you can change their hearts, Father God, and bring them to, 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 to cover the stories and to cover without bias, Father. We thank you that you can do that, and all things are possible. And we just thank you for, for, for helping and bringing godly people into the media, Father God, that can do that. In Jesus' name. The next prayer point is business. And we see many, many small businesses struggling right now. And we know that a lot of people are out of work. A lot of restaurants, a lot of different um, people in that um, industry, uh, hospitality industry, have been out of work. But Exodus 31, 3 through 4, says, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, given him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. He is a master craftsman, expert in working. God can do that for our business leaders. God can show them what they can do integrity among Christian workers so they can win the right to be heard. First Chronicles 29, 17. Impartation of ideas and resources to open principal businesses, especially in areas that need an economic boost. And we know many places need that across our country. Christian workers to display Christ-like humanity and, and service to their co-workers. Father, we lift up our businesses. We thank you for those, Father God, that you would take care of them right now that they would look to you as their source, not to the government, not to the art of the flesh, but to you, Lord. And we thank you that you will bring that, that help to them, the money to them, and thank you, Lord, that many, many, many of these businesses will be able to open soon, that you're helping, that you're leading and guiding our leaders to where they have a balance of, of, of waiting till it's safe, but also not waiting too long, Father God. You lead, guide, and direct them. And we thank you, Lord, that each person that, that is in, in these situations, they would, they would seek you and your face and your help and your wisdom that you would give to them, Father. Give them the witty inventions. Give them the wisdom and the ability, the expertise that they need, Father God. Help them during this time, Father God. And help them to, to be concerned about their workers, about their employees. And they, as they help them and bless them, you will bless them, Father God, these, these business owners. We thank you for that. And we thank you that our economy is going to bounce back. And we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for leading, guiding, and directing all those government officials and all, and all of our business leaders in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Another um, prayer point is education. And we know education has had to majorly change in just the past couple of months, going from a, a classroom-based learning program to, uh, to being at home, all on media, all on social media, and, and being able to do it all online. And it's amazing what they have done. And I have, you know, I know there's negative things, but I've heard some good things about that too. And I've heard some parents who, who have structure. And I heard of a grandfather telling me today that, that he lives with his daughter, single parent daughter and her two sons element or yeah fifth grade and eighth grade and she's incorporated him and he teaches bible to them every day now and gives them bible verses to learn and he teaches bible he he does he does the pe class physical education with them his grandchildren because he's a traveling minister and usually he's gone and right now he's able to be home and he's imparting this and he said this very well could be the only time in, in their lives that I could have this much time and this much influence on them. It blessed my heart to hear that. 
that he's taking the time and that their mother wanted this too and she even organized it so that he could in these blocks of time for the grandfather to, to speak into these boys lives I just think that's awesome so we didn't, we've heard negative things but there's so many positive things that can be happening right now think of the relationships the parents can can forge with these children right now they're at home and they can do that so that's what we need to pray for that and God, God can inspire them. God can anoint them, just like he anointed that mother to do that and give witty inventions and ideas to teach their children. Be creative. Oh, that's, you can get excited about that. Proverbs 2, 3 through 6. If you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, if you look for it as for the silver and search for it as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Isn't that great? And then we pray and from Psalm 1, 1 through 2, a return to the truth and a Judean, Judean Christian ethics. And think those things that cannot be taught in the public schools can be taught by the parents at home right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I pray that the parents do that. A safe atmosphere conduct, conducive, conductive to learning. And excellence in educators, Exodus 18, 20 to 21. Equal opportunities for every student to achieve their full potential. Philippians 1, 9. So let's pray for our education. Father God, we do pray for the education in our country right now. It's changed in the last few months. But Father God, there's unprecedented opportunities for these mothers and fathers, grandparents, to teach their children and grandchildren, Father God. And they will take the advantage, the time that they have to teach God godly ways to them, Father God. Do that. They impart that, that love, that wisdom to those kids. And those kids will receive that. They love having time with their family. They love having those one-on-one -on -one times with their moms and dads, with their grandparents. Thank you that these, this wisdom will be imparted to them. Thank you for these godly truths and impartations given to them and they will make a lasting impression on these young lives we thank you for it in jesus name thank you father god and then we come to the church the church is very important isn't it and so i started a message and we'll be continuing in a couple of weeks about is church essential <laughs> that's their question and yes the answer is a definite yes church is essential Colossians 2 6 through 8 so then just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord continue to live in him rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness see it to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ amen and then we pray that the the church would find a new zeal and commitment to the mission and purpose of Jesus Christ, Matthew 22, 37. We pray that unity with and among churches that reveal God's love to the world, John 17, 23. We pray a return to the absolutes of God's word, Psalm 1, 1 through 3. We pray for integrity that God's people look and act differently from the world, amen? 1 Peter 2, 11 and 1 Corinthians 13, 16. And we pray for a holy fear of the Lord released in the heart of God's people, Proverbs 9, 10. So, Father God, we do lift up our church. We lift up not just our church, Living Faith Fellowship Church, but the body of Christ, the church of the living God, all the churches across our country. Father God, we thank you that you lift them up. We thank you, Lord, that we would have a commitment to Jesus Christ, that we would be not bowing down to any pressure, that we would be uncompromising in what we say and what we believe, and that we lift Jesus up. Jesus is Lord in our churches, and we proclaim Jesus, Jesus who, who, who died for us and was raised from the dead, who, who saves us from our sins. We thank you for that, and we thank you we proclaim the life-giving message of the Lord Jesus Christ, of salvation in Christ only. Of, of Jesus as our healer, Jesus as our redeemer, Jesus in every aspect. And we thank you for that, Lord. And I thank you for that new zeal and commitment 
to the mission and purpose of Jesus. We thank you for unity among the churches, Father God. Tomorrow, as National Day of Prayer, there'll be many church, many people from many different denominations, many different churches, praying together. Oh, it just gives joy to my heart, Lord. And even in our own community, we have many of uh, many different churches praying together. And that we would be in unity. There would be a spirit of unity as never before, Father God. Band us together, Lord. The time is near. The time for your coming is near. Bind us together, Lord. Bind those churches together. That we are all one church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we would stand on your word. That we would not compromise but we would stand on the principles of your word, Lord. And we would stay, preach those principles and stay forth with them and go forward with you. And we would have a holy fear of the Lord, a holy reverence to you, Lord. We thank you for that. That we would have integrity. That we would look and act differently from the world. That we would be set apart to you, Lord. We thank you for that. Live a righteous and holy life. In Jesus' name. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And then we have the family. It says in Mark 3.25. If a house is divided against itself. The house cannot stand. We need united families. We have a lot of single parent families. We need to pray for these parents. Who are raising these children. We need unity and love in individual families that reach out in hospitality towards others. Romans 12, 9 to 13. We need the reestablishment of relationships between parents and children. Malachi 4, 5, and 6. We need a return to family values that serve the nation as a whole. Job 22, 21 to 22. We need a return to biblical mandate to train their, their children at home in the fear of the Lord and not leave the responsibility to others. Proverbs 22, 6. Father, we lift up the family unit tonight. We thank you, the Lord, it's not divided. We thank you for unity and love. We thank you these family members will get saved and turned on to you, and they would be united together. Unity and love in these families and reach out in hospitality towards others. We thank you for the reestablishment of relationships between parents and children in Jesus' name. A return to family values to serve the nation as a whole. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Father, for a return to family values and a return to a biblical mandate to train their children at home in the fear of the Lord. At this time that they've had with them at home, that there would just be a burning desire for these parents to do that and not give the delegate the responsibility to someone else, to the school system. But they would take the, the responsibility themselves and train their children up in the way that they shall go. And when they grow older, they will not depart from it. We thank you for the family unit. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for household salvation. Thank you, Lord, for all of our family members, those that are not saved, those that don't know Jesus. We thank you for them coming to the knowledge of Jesus. It's your will that no one perish, but all come to repentance. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I just want to give you another um, little announcement about the National Day of Prayer. The national observance is tomorrow evening from 7 to 9 Central Time. And it's broadcast, streamed, and posted in many ways, including um, on the website. There's websites here. Um, NationalDayOfPrayer.org is one place you can get it. It's also um, on the National Day of Prayer Facebook Live. And... Um, it's also going to be on God TV, Daystar, NLC. I'm not sure what NLC is. If anyone knows, let me know what NLC means. And possibly more to come. It's also on the Moody and Bot Radio Networks. So that's all good for a two-hour prayer, national prayer time together tomorrow night. So enjoy that. Kathy Brenzel, Will Graham, uh, Michael W. Smith, um, Andrew Palau. And many others are going to be there praying tomorrow. That's going to be a wonderful time. Amen? Praise God. Okay. So now we're going to go to our devotion here. And I've got 
some of those that here are in the sanctuary. I'm going to read this to you. And this is the devotion from the National Day of Prayer. Uh, or not the Presidential Prayer Team, sorry. That's another wonderful organization too, is the Presidential Prayer Team. And they have a prayer point every day for us to pray for our, um, our president. But this is a, the, the devotion today. Um, Psalm 68, 5. Father of the fathers and protector of widows is God and his holy habitation. Oh, okay. NLC means the Nebraska Library Commission. Okay. I didn't realize that. Okay. Loneliness, fear, anxiety, confusion, financial distress. All these emotions can be brought on by widowhood, both the widow and the widower. As you think of some of the widows in the Bible, imagine the circumstances and the emotions each of them may have, have experienced. The widow of Zarephath in Sidon was chosen by God and as the one Elijah would stay with during the three and a half years of drought in Israel. That's in 1 Kings 17. Then we know Naomi, an Israelite, and Ruth were in Moab when both their husbands died, and that's in Ruth 1, chapters 1 through 4. Abigail's husband was a boorish, harsh man who died suddenly when the Lord struck him. That's 1 Samuel 25. Bathsheba's husband was honorable but killed because of the pride of another, 2 Samuel 11. And then there's Mary, the mother of Jesus, by then a widow herself, who suffered the pain of watching her son endure the worst possible agony ever known. That's John 19. And yet, God the Father protected each of them in a partic way particular to their needs, and that it is no different today. His desire is for the care of the poor and the needy, the fatherless and the widow. God still watches over these vulnerable members of society and would enlist the, the believer to, to visit the widows and orphans. And James 1, 20, 1, 27 and do his part to help improve their situation. If the widow and orphan can trust the Lord, the Father in heaven, to be dedicated to, to providing for them, you can certainly trust him to stand as your helper in times of difficulty. He is the Lord, yesterday, today, and forever. Pray for his guidance in your life, and for this nation, and the men and women who lead it, he will be faithful. You know, God will take care of you. He has taken care of us through these last couple of months, and he will continue to take care of us. Trust in God. Rely on God. Not the arm of the flesh. Rely on him each and every day. And I've learned you trust him one day at a time. Right now, things are up in the air. It's hard to, to, to try to plan. Any pastor knows it's kind of hard to, to plan events right now. That means one day at a time. One day at a time, trust God. Amen? <laughs> Amen. James 1, 16 to 27. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from Father, our God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prioritized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Isn't that good? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Amen? Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows and their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. It has a lot to say about what we say, doesn't it? Be quick to listen, slow to speak. Amen. And we need that's good advice to remember. Amen. And, and know that God will take care of us. And God will take care of those that, that are in need. Okay, then we're going to go to the daily prayer briefing, May 6, 2020. Today, President Donald Trump will sign the official proclamation of National Nurses Day, which marks the beginning of National Nurses Week. 
The week culminates on the birthday of Florence Nightingale, the founder of modern nursing. As the nation has faced the epidemic, the president routinely praised the efforts and sacrifices of the nation's nurses. In March, he told nurses visiting the White House that he, Vice President Pence, and the American people express our gratitude for those on the front lines in our war against the global pandemic. As part of today's proclamation, the president will reaffirm the federal government's commitment to supporting nurses who are putting themselves at risk every day to help combat the outbreak and in order to provide care and save the lives of fellow Americans. In the afternoon, the president and vice president will meet with Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds for a briefing on Iowa's COVID-19 response. In addition to receiving updates on the state's testing methods and contact tracing, the president will also look to see how the federal government and Iowa can work together to, encounter, to counter outbreaks at the state's meatpacking plants. So as the Lord leads, pray with us. Father, we thank you for wisdom for the president as he leads the federal response to the COVID-19 outbreak. You give him divine wisdom, Father God. You anoint him to know what to do and what not to do. Thank you. Lead, guide, and direct him and everyone else that's under him, Father God, that they will know and they would lead and they would, they would be guided, Father. We thank you for that. And they just have divine wisdom. And everything that they do is done with integrity, done, done um, the, the way that needs to be done, Father. We thank you for it. Done with the spirit of excellence. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for guidance as the president works to provide for the needs of America's nurses as they work on the front lines. We, we pray for all the nurses, Father God. We plead the precious blood of Jesus over these brave men and women, Father God. We claim Psalm 19, 91 over them, Father God. Psalm 91, and we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We thank you for that, Father. They are protected. Thank you for giving them strength and help, Father God strengthen them. Many of them just feel like they can't go on, Father God. But you know that you will, we, you will strengthen them. They look to you, Lord, and you will help them. You will give them that supernatural strength and that grace that they need right now, Father. We thank you for that. Help each one of them. We lead God and direct them in all they do, Father God. And we thank you for you to be at work in the meeting between President Trump, President Pence, and Governor Reynolds, and as he meets, continues to meet with other governors and all the th things that he does each day, Father God, that are so very important. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And then we have a, a prayer here from Psalm 91, 5 through 7, and then 10 through 11. And this is what um, Don Wiest um, has written for us to pray for over our, um, our present. So let's just say this to those that are here in the sanctuary, we'll say this together. Our president, Donald Trump, is not afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. He does not dread the disease, COVID-19, that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though thousands fall at our sides, though ten thousands are dying around us, these evils will not touch us. Since we have made the Lord our refuge, and we make the Most High our shelter, no evil will conquer the U.S., the United States, no plague will come near our homes. For the Lord will order his angels to protect us wherever we go. And we make this declaration. Lord, thank you that you are my source of peace even in troubled times. I will rest in your love for me and your great faithfulness. Thank you that your name is above every name. I will not fear. I will trust in you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to take some time now to pray. We're going to pray for our country. And so Kathy's going to come up and play, and we're going to pray. And, and we are a spirit-filled Pentecostal church. We believe in praying in, in other tongues, and that's praying the perfect will of God. You're welcome to join us if you're not someone who prays in tongues, but you can still be in the attitude of prayer, and you can be praying with us. And we appreciate that you do that with us tonight. There's power in prayer, and we're going to do that tonight. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to pray for our country. And Father, we have prayed today. We prayed before the service, and we pray now, and we're going to continue to pray. And Father, sometimes there's things that we don't know how to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession with us, with groanings that cannot be interpreted or understood. And we thank you for that right now as we pray in the Spirit, Father God. We lift up the present. We lift up the situation. 
we come against the enemy, then there's no attack that, that, that we're not prepared for because you're prepared for it, Lord. And, and the devil is, is brought down. We trample on COVID-19 and we trample over every evil thing and we're trampling him under our feet. The devil and COVID-19 is trampled under our feet in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we have the victory. We thank you for safety and protection everywhere we go. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you as churches open up all across this state and, and many other churches across this country, Father God. There's divine protection. There'll be no COVID-19. Thank you, Father God. We are divinely protected in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in and through our present. And we thank you tomorrow for a, a record-breaking National Day of Prayer with so many, so, so many prayer meetings and so many people praying. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. And we just come to you right now and we pray in the Spirit. Ole Mahare Kasole Matia Sikari, Nebra Bohusila Nabati Kalana Tosi, Nebro Shakola Matia Sikari, Nele Brogu Kalamahati Asi, Nebro Kalamati Ashtore Vasive, Nebro Kalamati Atole Mahash de Kisage, Nebro Shikari de Borole Makari, Nebro Shikari Tasari, Nebro Shikari de Damasika Nemlomba, Ela Machole Masika de Tibolandu. Ye brostori bazidi, rode ma shakola. Ye le ma shakola hasia. Ne braho shikala to te bia sikala di ando. La brando shikala ite. Ne bro sikha mahande. Ne bro de hishtulande. Ne bro husti katiste. Ye soko pohole mante. E bro sikati asote. Roto shikam paniste. Ne bro kane hasti kalande. Roshoka basile de mande. Obra bahashi kati sande. O rimati kamati sikati anda. O brahashi kas. Ale broshi kasi da pasika. Lo brahashi da bosa. Ne brahoshi kopasi. Le brahoshi kavisi. O rebahashi di kamasi. A rebahashi di kalado bohosi. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Le brahoshi kalata basi. Ne brahoshi ande bati. Le brahoshi kati basi kalata do bosi. Ne brahoshi kati basi kati. Ne bruko la pasti kaliento sati. Bruko di bati la matisa ke baho. Ne brushi kahande di soto bolo. Oh, the Lord hears those cries. The Lord hears the cries of the weary. The Lord hears the cries of the weary. He said, "Come to me, you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy." And my burden is light. Oh, yes, Lord. Give them rest. Those who are crying out to you tonight, Father God, give them rest. Give them strength, Father God. Oh, be not weary in well doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. O Lemakade, O Rapahase, No Lemakade Yamose, Debra Kusila Pati. Roko de Pasti Kalati, Roko Hosi Kamati, Nebro Hoshi, Melama Nakasi Lamoko, Nebro Kosi, Nebro Kosi Lamakati Lamoke, Nebro Kosi Namati Lamato, Rokabo Sikati and Gaboshi, Yesu Kamati Kamadoti, Mikali Yando, the Makali de Batseta. Your own the Sikadi and no Makanise, the Dubra of Gori, Batali, the Isi Lando, the Kesin and Amaho Rakato, the Leko de Yansi, the Mondo, the Makati, the Lomo Sikadi and Salad of Anko, Roll the Kalean de Nabasi, Roll the Mahashe, the Kasi de Mahone, Makadi and Sainte, O Kalanima, the Mosikadi de Kamone, the Lembro Kosing, the Matile. Kalimba, Sodoma, Cassando, Ebrocosha, 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 Lepra Casita, Manon de Camande, O Brava Sicali, Ali Proho Sica, Ne Proho Shoko, Nalan Bahasi, Napu Sicandi Abo, Ali Casa, O Brava Sicandi, O Pacassi Ato, Matia La Camba, Nicandi, Nacandi. Nakande, O Rakasiato, Rakia Sitaranda, O Shakasi, Ashto Somatike, 
O Hamastika, no Rabahasika, O Bahasika, O Brabasika, O Brasen. I heard in my spirit discouragement. We come against discouragement in the name of Jesus. I, it just senses to me, it just seems to me there's a pastor or there's some people in ministry that are discouraged. Father, encourage them. Encourage them today. David encouraged himself. The Lord is God. There's times when we have to just encourage ourselves in the Lord our God. I thank you, Lord. Strength and encouragement to those pastors, to those in ministry, Father God. I pray for encouragement today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. They have the victory. And we thank you the blessings of God are overtaking them in the name of Jesus. The blessings of God are overtaking them. They'll be faithful. They'll be faithful to continue to, to, to fulfill the call on, on, the, on their lives, Father God. Thank you. For, they'll be faithful to continue. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And they're not going to faint. They're not going to faint in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Strengthen them right now. Strengthen them like that. Lift them up, Lord. Lift them up in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. I hope that I'm an evil Rosh Hakodesh. I so have a God. I have a big brother. I have a heavy Sukkoth. I have a shuko. I have a suko. I have a tisha komaho. I have a kula mahashiko. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We speak that over these ministers. We speak that over these, 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 these servants of God. In the name of Jesus, we shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall, up, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the name of Jesus. Kulamahasika <laughs> Nesu kapoteka, ye prosuko of das, O brocasianto, ye, 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 pola mahashtiko basi, kalva basera pola malakia, O brocasiano, propa sile makasti, roshikati stikande, ela mahashuko, ela mahashuko, ela mahashuko, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, 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 hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God, call it Master, Roba Hasika, Roshika, Libyasika, Rode Mahashikaro, Nebra Hosika, Nebra Kami under Saint Amokole Bene, Ebro Kusia de Dapahasho, Nebra Bosika, Nebra Bosika, Haha Diado, Yakahami, Nebra Mula Masi, Gore Mahashako, Nebra Hoshe, Ebra Hosani, Ro Kabadila Matore Mashi. Lebasuko barate, ika kote kalate. Oh, hallelujah. Kole matilado, kila na mashike, kila mashike. Ha ha ha. Do na prosikon, do prosuko na masina. Ro shikala, ro shikala, ro shikala. Ha 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 ha. Kule mahasika la mahoshe. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, le mahashika, oh le mahashika, oh le mahashika la mahoshe. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father. Kale matole, dile ma kale, ne brahoshikale masika, no brahoshikale, ne brahoshikale, ne brahoshikale, nada brahoshikale, ne brahoshikale, ne brahoshikale, no sukho mahoshikale, ne stula matu la masiko, ne brahoshikale, bro la mahasi, bro la mahashi. La broke, samote, la matente, la volte, de carte. Dobrate, casante, le volte, calante. Oh, le mahashti. Oh, le mahashti. 
Father God. Thank you, Father God. You hear and you answer our prayers. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. You are faithful. You are faithful and true. We thank you, Lord. What you say you will do. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, without a doubt, you will bring it, bring us out. Oh, without a doubt, you will deliver us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You take care of us. You lead, guide, and direct us every day. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the victory is ours. The victory is ours in Jesus' name. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, praise God. Thank you for the privilege. Well, thank you that we've been able to pray tonight. And thank you, Lord, for to be able to pray tomorrow for many, many people all across this nation praying tomorrow. We thank you for that, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, amen. We, we're going to pray on the prayer for nations. We always pray, God bless America. So we're going to sing that together. sanctuary if there's anybody that you need um, write it on the, the comments part and we'll pray for you tonight amen praise God something I forgot to say last uh, Sunday um, oh yeah I need to say a couple things here um, our due season radio program um, BJ Gardner and Superior Physical Therapy his um, he is sponsoring all the radio broadcasts Christian radio broadcast of the churches in Superior for two weeks last week and this next week and so our radio broadcast is being sponsored by BJ Gardner and Phys Superior Physical Therapy isn't that great yes. they wanted to do that for us so we're just really thankful and grateful about that, that they, they have sponsored that and all the different churches that, that that are on the radio on KRFS they are sponsoring that that's just an awesome thing now wanted to remind everybody we have sent out emails if you are a member of Living Faith Fellowship Church and if we have your email if and if you receive email announcements then you're going to get one for sure and we had a few other people that we had emails of and if we didn't have your email we sent a letter to you by snail mail okay that might take a little while but but we do have Facebook and we put that on there on the Facebook um, page here about the all the guidelines that we have been released to have services with more than 10 people and we're going to start that this sunday um, may 10th mother's day but there are quite a few different things we have the, the sanctuary all taped up and, and every other row of chairs is taped up so we have to come in and distance six feet apart if you're a household you come together and they're basically coming together in your vehicle you can sit together okay basically but otherwise you've got to be six foot apart and we'll work that out and we have just different rules 
and the usher will open the door for you when you come. We'll, one person in the bathroom at a time. Um, we just, we'll have a bucket where you can drop your offering at. Um, though all those different things will be dismissed by one row at a time. I will stand outside of the door and, and wave at you goodbye. <laughs> and so we'll get to the point where we can hug each other and, and um, shake your hands and such. But right now we're going to follow the guidelines of Jesus is Lord and, and, and COVID-19 is under our feet in the name of Jesus. And we're thankful for all these things. Okay, we got a prayer request from Shelly. Please pray for my sister, Jennifer, who is tested for COVID. Please come in agreement that the test will be negative. Okay, so Shelly. Sister. Negative. Hi, Diego Wolf. Can you please pray for me and my family? Yes, Diego, we will pray for you. Diego's mom. Mom and family. And you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, let's just pray. Father God, according to Matthew 18, 19, the prayer of agreement. Father God, we are agreeing that Shelly's sister is negative for the COVID-19. Um, Father God, we thank you for touching her. And we thank you for the healing power of God, the health of God in her. And, and, and COVID-19, there is no COVID-19 in her body whatsoever. She is is touched by your strength, by your strength, by your by your protection. We plead the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus repels the coronavirus. It can't come nigh her, can't come near her, according to Psalm 91. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for her sister. And Father, we lift up Diego. We lift up his family. We lift up his mom. And, and Father God, just all these situations, whatever those situations are, that you, the health of God over them, the peace of God over them, the prosperity of God over them, the blessings of God overtaking them, that they all continue to, to just love you and serve you and sense your peace and your, your divine protection. We plead the blood of Jesus over them claim Psalm 91 and we just thank you for your many blessings and continue to give Diego and Jennifer strength Father God as they're taking care of that, of that little baby and we just thank you for that and, and just strengthen them all Father and we just thank you for touching them in the name of Jesus we thank you for your hand upon them in Jesus name Amen Amen. Praise God well if there's anything else we can come back and pray for that we're going to take up our offering if you those here in the sanctuary can get your own envelope and you can make your check out to Living Faith Fellowship Church, LFFC. And um, those that are um, giving online, if you want to give online, you can. And we, um, there's a PayPal, there's a donate button there on Facebook Live and you can donate to that. And um, also on our website, you can do that too. And you know, I am excited because I am tithing off of my um, stimulus check, it came this morning, I realized it. And the first thing I did was write out a check. Praise God. Praise God. So I, that's check's been ready all day for me to give tonight. And I'm just showing you as your pastor that I am giving. So if you get a stimulus check, you should tithe 10%. Amen? <laughs> so I'm showing you right now that I'm doing that. Not to say whoop, whoop de doo is me, no way. I'm just thankful for the privilege of being able to give. It bubbles up on the inside of me. The privilege, because I love my Lord and Savior so much that I want to give to the kingdom of God. And I just, I'm excited. And when I give, God can give more back in so many ways. He's such a good God. And we, God's not enough. He's too much. <laughs> He's wonderful. Praise the Lord. So let's just pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege of being able to give tonight. 
We thank you for your many, many blessings. And we thank you, Father, you're so good. And we just continue to claim our harvest. Every need is met. Every bill is paid. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for Living Faith Fellowship Church. Every bill for, for remodeling is paid more than enough. We thank you for it, that everything will be finished and we and have all the money that we need and more to, to pay every bill connected with that. We thank you for it. You're the God of all plenty. You're El Shaddai. We thank you for it. And thank you for each person. The government's not our source. The stimulus payment's not our source. It's you, Lord, that's our source. But we're just thankful and grateful that we can be a conduit to bless other people. And as you give to us, we just keep on giving back. And we just thank you, Lord, it continues. And we love you. We thank you. We thank you for the privilege to be able to give. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We'll just, as we go tonight, we'll just put them. I can't tell what that is. He's got something. And, oh, the envelopes, what do you want us to do with them? We're just going to give them to you as we leave. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you. I'm a little tired tonight. Maybe not. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, thank you. He's trying to get me to do the confession. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Repeat this after me. As I tithe and give offerings, I'm believing you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, Discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase, and greater victories in the midst of greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs, that I may have more than enough to give, to promote the gospel, of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is more than enough. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. Now, tomorrow morning, bright and early, 7 a.m., I'll be up and going before that be ready to pray tomorrow so you can join us now the beauty I'm not gonna and of course you know this already too but if you miss it you can always watch it later but I'd love to see you up early and praying with us tomorrow morning amen that would be great so make sure you take some time tomorrow and pray you know everyone's got time in their busy schedule even if you have to wait to your lunch hour so you get off at work, just take some time tomorrow. I challenge everyone listening, watching tonight, you make a special prayer for our nation tomorrow. Amen? God, it, even if it's just five minutes, God sees your heart, and, and he honors that. So do that from your heart. Pray for our nation. And we're all together. Amen? And, I, and we have victory. Amen? Praise God. God bless you. We love you. And we will have Facebook Live uh, this Sunday, 10.30 a.m., but we also will be opened up to, to, up to more than 10 people. So you're welcome to come to Living Faith Fellowship Church and worship with us on Mother's Day. God bless you. See you Sunday. Good night.